Wow. Oh. Mouse. Two mice. Hello. Short stuff. Oh, what's going on? Welcome to another player profile and projection here on Talking Yanks. We've got a big one, a fun one, one that we weren't sure if we were going to get to do. Anthony Michael Volpe. Volpe. He's announced as a starting shortstop for the New York Yankees. Pretty exciting. We had some empty slots we saved towards the end of these PPPs because you didn't know who was playing up the middle. It worked out perfectly that we were recording one today. And last night, last night, it became official, Jake, that this 21-year-old kid from New Jersey is a starting shortstop for the Yankees. Jim, let me give you a little history lesson. Rizzuto. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not doing that. Um, I went back to 2019. Didi Gregorius had been our shortstop for a few years. He had a weird final year as a Yankee coming off Tommy John, and he just never got settled in. Glaber Torres was supposed to be given the shortstop role. It did not go well at shortstop. And then we've been in a weird little area where we've had two of the best shortstop free agent classes ever. We had a stopgap year of shortstop with two prospects along the way. One we got a taste of. And then it came into camp and this Volpe kid who we've heard so much about and ever since his uh, 2021 breakout minor league campaign. And everyone we've ever talked to in the Yankees organization who's mentioned him said he's next. Um, And the time is now. So uh, we couldn't go on Volpe until we saw that They would go on Volpe. They announced it before the season. I do think part of it was a true competition. Peraza had a bad spring. Volpe had a great spring. And they're going to roll with the kid. And it's um, it's as exciting. I mean, as excited as you can get for a young ball player. 21 years old. I believe he's going to be 22 soon. I think his birthday is in April. So he'll have a couple of days as a 21-year-old kid. Um, Yeah, man. I mean, it's really cool. It's really cool, and I want to. I want when we talk to Booney soon. I want to ask him what his leash is and what the, like because I hope right. just let him just let him play, let him flounder, let him fail, let him figure out the league and make the adjustment because you made this call. And, and when Booney gave him the news that he was breaking camp, he said, uh, "You know, you've only had twenty at bats in AAA. There's more development to have, but I think you should have that development happen in the bigs." Is what Booney's words were basically. So, as fans who are very excited, and finally we have a shortstop that's supposed to be the mainstay. Like We haven't had that since Didi in 2015, who even then, you weren't really sold that he was going to be the... You get into caveats a a little bit because the job was given to Glaber to be the shortstop, but he couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, but... He kind of muddied up because he started at second. So they kind of muddied it up before they even like did that. But this is a young kid, so... um, even IKF last year, who obviously we wanted to switch on and move on, it was because we this these kids were ready, right. and he was a stopgap. He was never sold as the long term guy. Like Volpe's being sold to us as you know through his free until free age was six years. He's gonna be the starting shortstop, so I'm excited. I hope the rest yeah. of the team plays around him uh, well, so the pressure is a little off him, and they get to slot him in the eight hole or the nine hole. I like the nine hole a lot because what. He can provide, Jake, even if the bat has to develop more and and get used to it, is speed and uh, at-bats. Or speed and defense, I meant, sorry. Like, the speed is crazy valuable. The speed is crazy valuable. You can tell how excited we are. We got to circle back on a lot there, uh, even what you just ran through. Um, Because defensively, let's see. Uh, we've, We've heard the kid is good with his hands. We've heard if there's any question, it's about arm strength. That can mean a lot of different things. Um, you know, Dansby Swanson won the gold glove in the National League last year, and I think he was the best defensive shortstop. And he has questions about his arm. So if you use your arm the right way, uh, it, it's not a problem. Let's see what Volpe looks For, like. His arm looks good in spring. For anyone that has watched, like he's no double pump, quick with it. 
And mostly right. it looks like yeah. he has his decisions made before the ball gets to him. And he's just like concise or confident and like get the ball. Oh, I'm going to first. I'm going third. I'm going home like right away. That's what I've seen in spring that I've really liked. And let's see. Uh, and, and we're going to see a lot of what he looks like overall as a ball player. I, I know me and Beebs were talking this morning. Like what, what, what's his opposite field power swing look like? I don't know. But we've seen him go to dead center. Um, I remember the like storyline last off season about him or last spring training was that like he went to one of those like pitching labs to get his arm strength improved upon. So like he's, sure. he's worked on that. Get strong kid. Um, where Jimmy was heading is what to expect from Anthony Volpe speed for sure. Uh, 50 stolen bags in 132 minor league games last year. Um, he had 33 in 109 games the year before that. He's used to the pitch clock and the big bags. He played in them with the minor leagues last year. The kid is going to run, and that's going to be exciting, especially if he's in that nine hole, which they said will be at opening day. We'll see how long he's in that nine hole. Uh, him in front of DJ LeMahieu is awesome. Uh, I mean, you know, if the hit and run makes a comeback, it, it sounds like you have the perfect combination there. Um, and... You know, within that, in 21, in 109 games, he had 27 homers in the minors. He had 21 homers last year. And, you know, doubles, when you have that kind of speed, whether it's natural pop or what, you're going to run into doubles because you're fast. So, um, Anthony Volpe is going to be a shot of life to this team. And when we're talking expectations, whether defense or just being a young ball player in general... And the Volpe had 22 games at AAA. Let's call that the month of April. Uh, 99 plate appearances, 236, 313, a 718 OPS. So he, he came up to AAA. He didn't light it on fire. It's not a bad stat line, but it's not a good stat line. It's not what he's expected to be. So in this first month of Anthony Volpe, I think the Yankees know that they've made this decision. He's at shortstop this year. We, gotta, we have to ride all of it out. And by the way, I don't think there's going to be a lot of it to ride out. But if it is the first month, which for a lot of young baseball players, it's tough to adjust to the big leagues, um, make sure you're giving Anthony Volpe some leash at home. Yeah, cheer him on and, and hopefully get on base and have speed. He's supposed to have really good control of the zone. Yes. Even for a young, a young player, which is nice. And I think in spring, what was his on-base percentage in spring? 400, which spring stats. Right. Blah, you've heard us say it a bunch. You know, Higgy hit 10 home runs. Bird hits 10 home runs. Wade had a great spring every single year and doesn't always translate. Um, I'm choosing to believe it will translate in some regard, in in not results, but in base running and what I saw in his, like, throwing motion and not swinging at balls. The only thing that would change there is you get a little antsy. You get a little, like, sure. you want to get that hit. I hope he gets his first hit out of the way early. Love that. Right? He's going to get a big ovation. First hit, first swipe, first homa. Um, and, yeah, his uh, I, I enthuse you, if that's a word, to go check out uh, his baseball reference in his minor league pages because it, it is interesting. When he when he was at low A ball, he had more walks than strikeouts, which is very impressive. That's, that's a very tough thing to achieve at any level. When he got called up to high A that s same year, so, you know, not, not to – shoot down any casuals but you know a and high a not a lot of people get into the depths of that when he went up to high a same amount of games 27 walks 58 strikeouts so there's going to be a learning curve and he's kind of shown the learning curve at every level which is actually kind of cool like the fact that he's had to take it on the chin for a little bit and learn and get better that was the story um, of judge too I mean, that's, you know, it's the story of a lot of young baseball players so uh, I guess that's why I was trying to get in front of the like you know <laughs> don't Volpe spring this year where he won dotted. Like, you know, that might not happen in April. Hope it does. Maybe he does it for the rest of his career. Maybe some sort of freak show. But um, it's pretty cool that they're giving him the gig and something that I've been asking for from the Yankees for a long time that our guy Joe's McFly mentioned this morning. He earned it. He played good in the minor leagues. He came to spring training. They said you were going to have an opportunity to earn it, and he did. He did nothing but earn it. He got hits off some cool names in spring, too. Two off Aaron Nola, big leaguer, Chris Martin, Tanner Hawk, big Mitch Liga. Keller, big who had, Liga. like, the best spring Good stats stuff. going. Uh, Pablo Lopez hit a home run off him. And I also like that if you're diving into his spring numbers, 
and stuff, which is all we have right now. I mean, besides minor league, but they don't keep as good a track as that as this is that he had one, two, three, four, five, six hits off of sliders. Okay. Three off, or three off of changeups, one off a of curveball. And four off fastballs, one cutter, one sinker. So he, it's not like, you know, if you open that up and you see just fastball, you're like, oh, well, a lot of pitchers throw their fastballs a lot in spring training. Well, sure. you, that's a, a, a little bit of the Higgy story. And no, seeing all those sliders and sliders from like Pablo Lopez, which was a cool one because he got Pablo struck him out on the slider. He made the adjustment. Pablo Lopez even said it in his post game. Um, it's cool to look at. Former Yankee, Pablo Lopez. Um, yeah, no it, crazy um, high velo, which is of note, I guess, if I'm going to p- point at what we're looking at. Like, no hits off balls, only one, 95 or more. Okay. Colin Selby. Gotcha, Selbs. Um, I I think another thing I like here, because um, I, I do think we've come, you know, they you know the biggest prospect since blank, and like, Glaber Torres was a big prospect. Glaber Torres was top five. You know, we knew he was a middle infield type. The joke that we've talked about for years now was that <laughs> the scouting report on him was he was a good baseball player. Um, and we've, we've kind of seen why now. I guess for Volpe, I love that he has a calling card of speed. Like, if you're Anthony Volpe and you're on the bases this year, go. Like, run wild, run young, wild, and free. Um, and have fun out there. Um, and then all the other stuff is going to take care of itself. Like, let's, let's see what the power swing looks like. Let's see what the other way looks like. Because what you said in control at the plate has seemed overly apparent, and I'm excited to watch more at-bats because it doesn't feel like he's guess-hitting. It feels like he's just reacting. Um, to, and again, I'm, I've watched you know his 20 spring training games this year, so I don't have the full scouting report. But... I'm interested to see what that looks like because it does seem like he's in control at the dish, kind of like that old school approach of like, if I'm looking for a fastball, but if you throw a breaking ball, I can adjust to that and hit that too, which would mean he's a very special baseball player. I'm trying to see how many pitches he swung and missed at okay. in spring training and see if there's any like giant grouping there. Estevan Florio swung and missed at 45 pitches. The next highest is like in the 20s. Swing big, kid. Yeah. Uh, swing and miss has been his issue. Yep. That's kind of his calling card. No, the swing and miss is a plethora of pitches, too. So, okay. again, I'd rather see that than open it up and it's like hmm. all one pitch because then you got a hole. Something you can work on. But, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm and excited, man. 21. Yeah, turns 22 April 28th. So, mark that down. Well, April birthday for the Yanks going forward. Um, I don't know. I, I guess he's he's in for a fucking whirlwind if he's good, man. Yeah. But just being a local kid, like, I always talk about how they sold Jeter as being local because he's born here and he visited his grandma every summer right. in New Jersey. You know, you basically were growing up. He's from New Jersey. Mr. Like, Brocksmith played him in the summer league. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this kid's from New Jersey. From Jersey. Yankee fans. Idolized Jeter. The and, whole nine. And how much love he's going to get is... It's going to be crazy. I mean, picture... But Judge can go to Linden and escape it. You the, know. The gallo. In Tampa. This kid's 21. He lives with his parents still, probably. He's going to get the Gallo Rizzo it's Italian crazy. love. Yeah, remember that? He's going to get the mm. Jeter love. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's um it's going to be interesting and that's why I um It's exciting. And I I guess the other thing that's cool about it is that anyone that you talk to when you talk Volpe and oh yeah, he's speedy. Oh, it's, you know, shortstop, second I don't know, like let's see. Ever not a single soul is worried about him as the human. As if he is the truth, if he is next in line to Jeter, like he's going to be up for it. Like he's kind of shown he is up for it. Um, which again, to be that way at 20, 21 years old, that's, uh, that's a special 
It's a special guy. And I think <laughs> I think he kind of comes from like a special family. Both his parents are surgeons. I keep keep saying that and saying he's probably got good hands. Wow. Um and yeah, I I guess um I don't know. I I don't have too many fears. You, you you'd you'd get worried about any player getting off to a good start, especially a young player with all the pressure we talked about. Um so, you know, you could you could really say that for anyone. Um I guess I I guess I know the offense is going to click at some point and it's to what degree. Um I want to see what the defense looks like day in day out. Yeah, I'm a little bit the opposite. Okay. Um just watching them in spring the defense looks like even if you're not getting a gold glover, you're getting a kid who can make plays at shortstop. Like, visibly looks like a shortstop. We didn't see that in Glaber, nor did we see that in IKF last year. It's true, but... Like, just visibly like, oh, those are the, the hands of and footsteps of a shortstop. So... He seems like he can stick there. So I'm not saying he's going to be a gold glover or amazing, but he does seem like he can stick enough there where that's not going to be like the downfall. But obviously you have to see. The bat's always the biggest adjustment, especially not not seeing AAA for that long and the adjustment there. So you never know. But I'm excited. I I guess let's say the injury bug catches the Yankees this year and Peraza comes up and Peraza's playing well. Do you think they'd put Peraza at shortstop and move Volpe? Yeah. Okay. To second or something like that. Okay. That's yeah. that's what I want to know. Because I know they did that this spring, but that's where I... And when you were doing your intro, you were kind of saying, you know, Volpe's got the starting shortstop job for the next six years. I, I think there could be wrinkles to that, right? But this kid is is being scouted and touted as a kid who's here to stay. Um, and yeah, I think they want him to be... The shortstop. I I mean I agree with you. I I guess just shortstop's a very hard position. Just in the in the path of this season, it would be interesting if injury trade whatever happened. Um, because you know I know we're putting Peraza a little bit on the back burner, but I I think it first infield injury this year. I think Peraza would be up. That I um I don't know. I guess we just saw how nervous they were to move IK off IKF off of shortstop. That um. I don't know. It'll be it would be an interesting equation if Peraza is due every day playing time, and he's kind of been touted as the better shortstop. Will they do that? I don't. I don't know. I don't know either. Because some Yankees marketing stuff comes in there, like we just did the whole. Shortstop I don't think they believe in Peraza. Thing. We kind of were saying that last year, the way they treated him, and they treated him odd. And they they sent him down for this kid, but I I do think I think if there's one Yankees infield injury, I think Peraza's the call. Yeah, or you you put IKF there, right? Or as Waldo, that's a replacing uh, position player with position. The first players. time they've had depth at the shortstop position. Hmm. How about that? Which is nice. So I don't know. I am interested to see how his bat changes when pitchers see him a bunch and he sees them a bunch. Uh, his splits are pretty good, although he is a, a, a slow starter. In, in in minors last year, April and May, were slower in the He's cold weather. He's been at a new, basically yeah. a new league each time. That's the other thing. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if that's a slow starts issue or, or just his issue of just the first month or so at a new level. He has yeah. to figure it out. Yeah, 2021 was the same, but that's the first time playing baseball in a while. He does get better as the season goes every year. It looks like offensively, so that's exciting. And how about that? He should this year. What do you want out of him slash line? I know that's kind of rude to put on a young kid, but like what would you even be what would you be ending the season saying, Yeah, run it back? I mean, for me it's probably like uh three fourteen, three seventy, eight hundred OPS. That's Jeter's rookie of the year stat line. Oh, that'd be nice. So that's that's my min. No, man, I um, I want to see what I think everyone should look for in a young ball player. I want to see growth throughout the year. I want him to run wild. Like I don't, I don't ever want to be at a point in the season where we're like, oh yeah, Volpe's not running much. Like no, this is what this team's been missing for the past couple of years. Like go nuts. Um. What are you going to measure him on? 
Yeah, I'd like the batting average to be a, like above 250 and the okay. on-base percentage to be around 350. He's, that's his skill. Like, that's the one skill I'd rather – I'd like to not see him lose in the bigs. Like, if, okay, the power is kind of zapped – um, or he's like labor, like hitting more for power and less everyday hits. Um, but he's supposed to have a good eye, had a good eye in spring. I'd like the on base. Uh, cause I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, um, kind of like slows his nerves down too. It's a sign of that. He's right. not, he's composed in the box, taking his pitches, waiting for them to come to him. So I'd like the on base percentage to be good. Like if we leave, if, it the, if he plays the full season and the on base percentage is 300, 305, not going to feel great about that. I guess what's good? I mean, it's 340. 100 miles, 100, around 100 higher, 80 to 100 points higher than his batting average. Okay. I mean, that's good. That's really good. Not pretty good. I think, like, try to think of some guys on the, I mean, I think 60, 75 points higher. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. The kid, the kid's got big expectations. Yeah, I, he's supposed to be a good player. Like Glaber was two fifty seven, three ten. We we have that as from last year, and that's with shifts. But Glaber's not an on base guy. No. So he's an on base. This kid's an on base guy. Hopefully, at, I'm just saying. Even for a rookie, that's a very high, and and like I talked about at the different levels, he come up. There's been an adjustment period. So that's, I don't know. It's a good goal to have. Yeah, 80 higher. I mean, that's, okay. you look at good players, that's what they're doing. Okay. I can do 80. 100, 100, said, 100 clip me a little bit. A- I said 80. 80 to 100. Yeah. I like, I like, a, I think 80s, I think I would have 80 as my loft goal. I would have six, for his rookie year, I'd be 60 to 80 points higher. But I'm talking about things that like are exciting me. I'm saying if every other stat okay. declines, that's the one stat I'd like to not. Okay. That's how well, I, that's how I present it. to still be okay. yeah. good. If he hits 230, right. give me 330. Because if you hit 230 and you're at uh, 2 or 310, well, that doesn't do shit for me. Yeah. So if the batting average is somewhat decent, give me 80 points higher on the on-base percentage. And the steals, I, I'm, I, we need you need that. You can't have them be Yankee fied. No, nah, we don't do that. Yeah, I guess I, I'll be focused on the speed. That's like my need requirement. And then I'm, I guess I'm interested to see what the pop comes to because I, I genuinely have no idea what to do with his minor league numbers there. Because again, you should be excited from him. The numbers are really good. Um, you know, can will we be talking about him next year as a? 15 homer guy, a 20 homer guy, a 25 homer guy. I don't know. Um, but either way, I'm excited to find out what it looks like because every, everyone that talks about him and all the numbers, literally everything is like kind of chef's kit. He's like, <laughs> he's made in the Yankees' lap, man. Yeah. I want him to, you know, if the bat's good, be an everyday bat. Don't be more of what we got, which is non OBP. Also non-batting average guys, besides Judge last year. And Rizzo, I think he was re- still really good at on-base percentage. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Steal the captain from Judge? Wow. Might as well. People are saying that? <laughs> right from under his Judge, nose. Judge, opening day, Judge presents him with a co-captaincy. Everyone else is like, what? And my co-captain. And thanks to Hal for bringing him up. Best owner in baseball. Love you, Hal. And every episode like that now. Sure. Thanks, Hal. Church of Hal. We love the team, man. Hal's about to have a big 20 years. I don't know if everybody knows that yet. Does he know? George got booed before he, he got loved. That's true. He was. He would have been on a lot of uh, slideshows of bad owners before he became the best one. Judge is hyping him up. The Italy thing. You start getting it's older cool. and a little kooky. Cohen. Get, get one more story. Come on. All his relatives have died.